She belongs to the streets. We hear that all the goddamn time. Well, where the hell are all the good girls at? Let me tell you one thing. You don't find a good girl, you make her. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you some criteria that you can start using to select four women who are more serious and suitable for long-term relationships and some hints on where you can actually find them as well. My name is Sterling Cooper. I'm an award-winning adult film star, former high-class male companion, and I'm here to help you transform your sex life. So, the dating world can be kind of frustrating for a lot of men, especially the modern dating world. And, you know, in, in, on the internet these days, the phrase, she belongs to the streets, is uh, bandied around quite a lot. And there's no denying that women's body counts are very, very high these days, relative to dudes. And far more women are having casual sex than the equivalent number of men. So, when it comes to finding a woman who you want to take seriously, you don't want a woman who's not giving you your, her sexual best. You don't want a woman who's not giving you her peak years. If you're looking for a woman you can take seriously for a long-term relationship, I also think you should be looking for a woman who can potentially be the mother of your kids, or who can, you know, you can go on to marry if you choose to do that. I'm not a fan of marriage, but I know some people are. I don't like the idea of the state getting involved in my personal business. So here are some criteria, some green flags, if you will, that you can start looking out for and vetting women on so that you can start whittling down the pool to a suitable few who you can actually take seriously for a long-term relationship. The first criteria is, can you find her tits and ass on her Instagram? I'm not joking, this is a serious criteria. Or more to the point, maybe you can find her tits and ass on her Instagram, but is her Instagram basically an abundance of her tits and ass? If it sh is, is her Instagram mostly her in a bikini on some other dude's boat? If that is her Instagram, then this is basically a red flag that you probably can't take this woman seriously for anything long term. She's just for fun. Another piece of criteria I would and I would encourage you guys to consider is, does she have a healthy relationship with her father? And did her mother and father kind of adopt respectively masculine and, uh, sorry, feminine masculine roles in the household? Did she have that natural polarity growing up as a good role model for her to emulate later on in her life? If she's a boss babe who works in law or feminist gender studies, I would have to tell you that that's a giant, giant red flag. There's not much point in getting involved uh, in anything long term with a woman like that. She's going to be combative. It's going to, she's not going to adopt that natural masculine feminine role in the household. She's not going to be a stay at home, home wife. She wants to be a lawyer and, and, and pursue that career full time. Lawyer is just one example that stands out in my mind, because there's a lot of those here in Miami, but uh, you can find equivalent career type ladies as well. Here is a career choice that is actually a green flag in my opinion. Uh, did she work as a waitress when she was younger? Here's why. Waitresses, one, have to learn to be polite. It's part of their job, they have to be polite and, and respectful. They are, uh, you know, kind of social chameleons, in a sense. So what that means is that if you have a woman who's been a waitress before, she's going to be able to, to make you look good in any social scenario in which you go out. She's going to be relatively agreeable and pleasant and nice to be around, or can at least put the front on that she is, even if she's in a bad mood. So waitresses are actually a real thumbs up in my personal opinion. Another career where she's tr been trained to be polite and agreeable for in, in a lot of circumstances is basically like customer retail service. So like uh, working any kind of clothing retail where they have to be personable and, and polite and relatable to the clientele that come in. 
Here's another big green flag to look out for. Will she sleep over at your house? Now, the opposite of this is a red flag. If she doesn't sleep over at your place, or doesn't want to sleep over at your place, what that tells you is that she doesn't want to basically fall for you. She doesn't want to fall in love with you. She doesn't want to develop a strong emotional attachment with you because she wants to keep hoeing around and being, you know, the village bicycle or whatever. If she is keen and comfortable in sleeping over at your place very, very quickly, uh, that's a good thing. That means she wants to form a bond. She wants to form, you know, a, a pair bond. And there's no, no faster way, in my opinion, of getting a woman to sort of fall in love with you than having her sleep on your chest overnight and, and, and wake up in, go to sleep and wake up in your arms. So she knows she's safe and protected all night. It does something very, very uh, powerful. It does something very powerfully to the to sort of the deep female psychology that's going on there, but wanting a man who is a protector and a provider. Does she do things for you to try and please you, try to make your life easier and better? Now, things like cooking, cleaning, laundry, helping you out with various errands and things. Uh, and does she do, do so with the attitude of wanting to please you rather than it's a burden or a chore for her? Can you ask her to help with these things with very little resistance from her? These are green flags. If you see, if you, I mean, just try this out yourself. Like I do this personally. If a girl, you know, if, if I'm seeing a girl a couple of times, I'll ask her to cook me something or I'll ask her to help me. Oh, hey, my look, look my, I'll kind of sneakily, I'll deliberately do this. Uh, empty out my my, lawn, my freshly washed laundry onto the bed and needs to be folded uh, before we can go to bed. Oh, babe, can you help me fold, fold this laundry up? I've got a little bit of work to do. If she folds my laundry so we can go to bed together, that's a green flag, right? She's doing this thing, this, she's doing this thing for me. She ain't complaining about it. She ain't whinging. She's, be, she's doing it to please me. And more importantly, I also make sure I reward her with affection afterwards for doing that. But that's a video for another day. But does she do these kinds of things for you to please you to be a good girl for you that is a giant green flag now this last bit of criteria is easily the most controversial one i'm gonna give you guys here and a lot of you might completely disagree with it and i know a lot of women will absolutely hate this piece of advice personally I don't think you, any man should really bother getting involved in anything serious and long term if it's a brand new relationship. Uh, you know, if you've had a relationship with a woman for, for several years, that's fine. If you've sort of grown together and you've spotted these green flags in her, excellent, cool. But personally, I don't think any man should get involved in a woman that is older than like 22. So 18 to 22 years old, that's, your, that's the age range that you're recruiting from. To look for a woman for serious long-term potential. Here is why I'm going to justify my somewhat controversial opinion to you now. Men peak. Men hit their sort of sexual market value peak in their mid-30s. Women hit their sexual market value peak in their 20s, early 20s, very, very early 20s, right? That's when we are at our primes. So, if you're a man looking to settle down, you shouldn't be a man looking to settle down long term anyway until you're in your 30s. If you're, if you're looking to like settle down and, and, and get married and have kids like in your early 20s as a man, I personally think you're kind of making a mistake. You should wait until you're more established. And you, so you have the ability, the abundance to choose a good potential long term uh, mother of your kids. That's primarily the reason why. But I digress. When you are at your peak, you should be looking for a woman at, your, at her peak. You shouldn't be settling for a woman who's past her prime, aka a woman in her late 20s, if you are a guy in your prime. That doesn't really make any sense, right? So stop compromising like that, just because it's easier to find a woman who wants to settle down with you who's in her late 20s, aka past her prime. The other reason is, <clears throat> obviously she's had less sexual partners. Most guys prefer a woman who is, has less sexual history. So, if you pick a woman who's in her early 20s, 
she's obviously going to have less sexual partners than a woman in her 30s. That's just a numbers game. Cool. That makes sense. Another really big thing is what you'll notice is that women past their, their mid-20s and into their 30s, they have a few things going on in their life which actually makes them not really compatible for a long-term partner. They've gotten into their career. So they, they, they've worked at a career, they've picked a career, and they're, they're trying to be the boss, boss bitch, the, the boss lady, and, and strive in their career. That means they've got less time to focus on you and a potential family with you, or there's going to be a conflict there in some way, shape, or form. Two, they've, if they've been in one city for a long enough period of time, when they're in the, by the time they're in their mid-20s and 30s, they've got their own established kind of social circle and social activities uh, and their own kind of network. The ideal scenario for a relationship is one in which she enters your world, not you entering hers or you two having sort of parallel running uh, worlds. Real, ideally, you want her to enter into your world, become a part of your tribe, your family, your group, okay? So if she doesn't have like her own group out there already, that's going to make that far easier. And, you, and if she is like a mid-20s or, uh, sorry, yeah, mid-20s, late-20s woman with her own group of friends, some of them are probably going to be feminists, some of them are probably going to be Karens, and that's going to create more conflict because you're going to be trying to get her to be a good girl and, and you know, be, be loyal and faithful and, and pleasant, heaven forbid, and then her Karen-y friends are going to be like, oh, why, are you, why is your man treating you like that? You should be boss bitch, whatever. Some bullshit, right? So there's a conflict there. Again, another reason why I go with younger girls. Younger girls are generally less bitter and jaded about men and about the world, for the most part. Women in their late 20s tend to be more bitter and jaded, and they tend to be more... They tend to have more... Uh, they tend to be more demanding and have an unreasonable sense of entitlement, in my uh, experience, women in their late, uh, mid to late 20s. Because they've been told, they've been brainwashed, they've been, they've been brought up with feminism, etc. They've been told that they're a bad... bad boss bitch or whatever. Another really obvious reason you would choose a younger woman is for, for a long-term serious relationship is fertility. She's going to be able to give you more children and they're going to be healthier. Statistically, they're going to be far healthier because she is more fertile at a younger age. That just is a no-brainer. Uh, the other real big one is, like we said before, the younger she is, the less experience, sexual experience she's had, less sexual partners she's had, the less boyfriends, etc. she's had you stand a far better chance, st just statistically, of being the best she's ever had, the best man she's ever had, the best sex she's ever had, the most successful man she's ever had, all these criteria. You stand a far better chance of being the best she's ever had if she's had less experience than if she's a woman in her 20s, 30s who's been around on a billion. She's been flown out to Dubai. She's been on a bunch of boats here in Miami. She's been, she's been invited to a bunch of tables, etc., etc., etc. So, if you lock down a woman in a, you know, 18 to 22, if you lock down a woman in that age range, you can be that prime figure, that best she's ever had. And if she's a good girl, get her in a long-term relationship, she falls in love with you, you have a family, you have kids together, whatever, cool. It stays that way. And you've got someone who actually genuinely desires you, adores and admires you and loves you, raising your kids so it creates a healthy happy male female dynamic for that family now one of the biggest problems that happens in long-term relationships is it ends up becoming passionless and sexless so is your wife tired of your love sausage well find out how to fix that right here